I would like to welcome our first guest speaker, Fanula McArdle. <laughs> Fanula's baby girl, Faith, was born very early at 23 weeks and one day on the 9th of October last year. She was just over one pound when she was born. Doctors gave baby Maeve a 0.1% chance of survival, but she has defied the odds and is now thriving at eight months old. Thanks to the wonderful care of the staff in the neonatal intensive care unit at the Royal Victoria Hospital. Fanula will now share with us her story. Hi. Um, I'm just coming here to speak from the heart. I don't have anything planned, so I'll just tell you how it started. Um, after having three miscarriages and went on to having an uh, operation on my womb, to find out that I was pregnant again, I was overjoyed. Everything was going well um, until about 22 weeks when I was brought into hospital. Um, it's a long story, but um, I was put on bed rest with um, bulging membranes and two centimetres dilated, ready to have my baby at any time. I was told straight away from the start that if the baby wasn't get brought to 24 weeks, there was no chance of survival and that nothing would be done. Um, this is only obviously because of the 24 week abortion limit. So because of that limit, my baby wasn't going to be saved. Um, it got to 23 three weeks and I was in the labour and I begged and I cried and asked them to save my baby. They weren't going to give me the injections to, to help um, her lungs produced whenever she was outside the womb but I again begged them and begged every doctor that I could and they decided to go ahead and give me the injections. Maeve was born at only 480 grams. She was one of the smallest babies born here. She was actually one of the earliest babies here to survive. I was told that she had a 0-1% chance of survival but whenever I was having her they brought that down to 0% and said that Maeve would never survive and that when she was born, if she did survive, would be severely disabled for life. That's not the case. Maeve is now eight months old. She is an absolutely happy, beautiful, lovely wee girl. She is doing everything, exceeding all expectations. Anything that is thrown in front of her, she, she fights it. She's had a heart operation. She's had two high eye surgeries, she's had further surgeries on um, a camera down her throat and she bounces back off absolutely every single thing. She is the most strongest person in my life. She has made my life so much happier. And if I was to be told that that was going to be taken away from me, it certainly would never happen. So what I want to do is to urge anyone who is to have or go into preterm labor, fight for your baby. No one else is going to do it for you. They want to be able to just hand you your baby and let your baby pass away. Now, you have the, you have the right to fight for your child. Give your baby the chance. And if that isn't the case, well then at least you'll know that you did everything you can. There are so many people out there who have probably let their children go. And I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I am sorry for your loss. 
Um, anyone else who has probably in my situation who probably haven't had the outcome that I have, I am also really sorry if you've ever lost a baby. But just keep going and keep fighting and there are, are many more babies that need us to help them. Um, I really, really, really urge that the limit of abortion is brought down from 24 weeks so that many other people like myself will be able to give their babies a fighting chance. Thank you. Yesterday, was I not at the first rally? And I said, Yeah, you were in your mummy's womb. Because the miraculous thing about Grace and Summer and her other little sister here is whilst Grace should have still been in the womb when she was born at 24 weeks, her mother conceived Summer. So they're both, they're called Gaelic, Gaelic twins. Summer would never have been here if it hadn't have been that Grace was born prematurely. So God has a miraculous plan. He knows the days that he gives to us. He says it in Psalm 139. So Grace is here every year, and I always say, you know, whenever I hang up the clogs, this will be one, and this, these grandchildren of mine will take over the show. So uh, thanks, Maeve. Thank you, Maeve. Vanilla, uh, for sharing the beautiful story about Maeve. And what she's saying really is, we need to keep fighting for every unborn child. And we need to ensure that those children are given life. And in Northern Ireland and throughout the whole of Ireland, we can give our babies life because we're a pro-life nation. And we're pro-life and proud. Thank you. You see, I think I've got boxing in my blood. You put me into corners and I come straight back out again. As you know, the last time I spoke at this rally in 2014, I was waiting a very difficult, I was facing a very difficult time in my life, as, my, as was my family and my colleagues in Precious Life in the pro life movement. And 18 months of persecution from the media. But I did not doubt for a second that God would vindicate me. You see, he is our vindicator. He is God Almighty. And whilst we fear these threats that come against us, we have to remember with God on our side, we must win this battle. In this very moment in the history, of this battle Ireland is literally facing the whole global abortion industry who want nothing less than to legalise the cold-blooded murder of our little brothers and sisters and they want to see our government and our, our government and our Christian politicians here in the north of Ireland do their dirty work we are gathered here today to make our voices heard and we will shout from the rooftops that we the people will never be silent while these evil people plot and plan to murder our children. This battle must be stopped and it will. The pro-abortion movement thought that they'd shut me up. They thought they'd shout Precious Life down. They thought they'd put us in the corner. But we are out fighting and we will continue to fighting because these are our little brothers and sisters who need our voice. But it will call for a lot of sacrifice and commitment. Mother Teresa said, abortion is the greatest destroyer of peace in the world. If we accept that a mother can kill even her own child, how can we tell others not to kill one another? When we take the weakest member of society and deny their human rights instead of protecting them, then we cannot have peace the peace that we long for here in Ireland. We cannot have peace until we have peace in the womb. 
peace begins in the womb. When a child who is in their most independent situation, the weakest member of our society, and a society denies them their most fundamental human rights, then we have a human rights crisis at the core of our society, and we can never have peace because peace begins in the womb. If we as Christians truly believe that God is the author of life, then we need to stand boldly against abortion. And we as a church, the Church of Christ, are called to be outspoken, bold and courageous. We must rise up because we have God on our side. And with God on our side, no one can be against us. Because what we do for the least of the little ones, we do for Jesus. It is not the light that we need, but the fire. It is not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, and the earthquake. The feeling of the nation must be quickened. The conscience of the nation must be roused. And prosperity to the nation must be startled. The hypocrisy of the nation must be exposed. And its crimes against God and man must be denounced. Now that statement came from an abolitionist of the trade, of the civil rights movement, the abolitionist of slavery. And he was Frederick Douglass. We are the civil rights movement 